This is Phase Ed Music. What's up, people? Gun the Hookah here. I want to first say Happy New Year's to all of y'all who just made it to the other side of the calendar. We are going to have a good time this year, hopefully, in spite of the plague, but that's all right. I figure I had to smoke me a little salt, man. Get me right. Smoke my shisha. Cherry flavored shisha. Beautiful time. But today I am going to do my gun collection. It's about fucking time, right? It's about fucking time, right? Well, sort of. Part of my gun collection. Not, not all, because, you know, I'm old. I don't want to lug all these damn things around. But I will give you a significant amount, just a few pieces that I have, to kind of whet your appetite, wet the beak a little bit, just to kind of show you what you can have if you don't already have it. Because some of y'all have some really nice stuff. Shout out to OB. Goddamn hate. This dude's got two Smith and Wesson 500 ES. Two inch barrels, man. God, those are unicorns. He's got two unicorns. I'm so hating on that guy, man. That's what real hating is all about, man. I don't, I don't like him now. I, I really don't like him. No, no, he's a cool cat, man. If you ever know who Life with OB is, you need to check him out because he's really got some really cool stuff. Um, he's done really good stuff on his channel, man. I'm trying to get some of his his subscribers, his families, man, because he, he's doing it big out here. I'm um, looking forward to meeting Life with OB and definitely shooting some of his toys and have him shoot some of mine. But anyway, this is not about life with OB, even though I am hating on him. I so don't like that guy right now because he's just got some cool ass toys that I want. That's what real hating is all about, man. But anyway, that's all right. That's all right. That's okay. Calm back down. I'm gonna calm back down. He, he's an ally. He's an ally. He's a comrade. He's a brother. Love. Show love to him. Anyway, on to mine. This is definitely a motivation. He's definitely motivation. So I figure why not do it, man? He took the time out. To, um, share his share his world with you. I'm gonna do the same. Uh, shout out to Life with OB. Shout out to Jay the Shooter. Shout out to R Double G. These just some people that says R Double G act like he ain't no gun snob, but we that's another combination. We have a combination. See, I'm already. I ain't even been drinking yet, and I'm already wild. That's just another um, another story together. But uh, hey, hey bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man. You know. But anyway, a lot of the people who showed their guns. I'm gonna show mine. Some of you seen, some of you have not, but I'm gonna go ahead and set it off. Without further ado, I'm going to set it off with, uh, let's go CNR. CNR right here. This is uh, one of my one of my first few CNRs. Uh, this is a Tokarev TTC 762 Now you see now, you done fucked up, you know that, don't you? For those of y'all out there, safety Nazis and all that good jazz understand you, this gun is clear. All right, 762 by 25. This is one of my first CNRs. This is a really, really nice gun. I put this against any joint right now, steel on steel. Um, they call it the poor man's 1911. I don't know how much of a poor man's 1911 it is because these bad boys are climbing in price. This is a really good shooting gun. Um, a little weight on the trigger. Oh, I got it on safety. Let me see. Right there. And then light reset, but not not bad. Single action, double action. Not not a bad gun. Definitely, I recommend you have one of these in your uh, in your collection. It only holds uh, seven plus one, but it ain't about the amount of rounds you got. It's about the marksmanship. And about like I said, it ain't about the mags. It's about the marksmanship. But yeah, you definitely want you a, a Tokarev TTC. This one is a Romanian one. Uh, I also have a Bulgarian one that's on the way, and I have a Chinese one as well, but I was gonna show this one, it's Romanian. All right, now, on to the next. Big Boy Revolver, woo, this is one of my carry joints, man. Of course, it is not loaded right now. I do have rounds that I took out so I can show this piece. This right here is my Ruger Red Hawk, Super Red Hawk Alaskan, chambered in 454 Casul. I love this gun, love it. This thing is considered a bear gun. 454 Casul is a really nasty round. A, very, a lot of energy in that round. So, and it's a two inch barrel. They do have six inch barrels, but I wanted two. And here's the story behind this one. I actually won this gun in a raffle. Well, not exactly this gun. I won a SIG. I want to say it was a P228, but I didn't want a SIG P228. So if that's what, either 226 or 228, didn't want that shit. So I upgraded 
for a couple extra dollars and I got this bad boy here and I have been in love ever since. I had this gun for about, uh, about four years, four and a half years, four and five years. Really nice, beautiful gun. Shout out to Revolvers. This is my gun. Next gun I'm going to show. Mm, so many to choose from. Another revolver, go ahead. Right here, 500 Magnum, Smith & Wesson. Let me go ahead and clear that out. Definitely empty, no nothing in there. This is a high vis three and a half inch barrel. Uh, this is as close to the unicorn as I'm gonna get for now because those unicorns, if you can find them, those two inch barrels, they're very expensive. I remember when they were like 750 bucks. Now, if you find one for less than 2,500 bucks, you're doing something. But these, this is the closest thing I'll get. I may get another high vis, but this, the next one I'll probably get is chambered in 460 Smith. But this is one of my 500 Smiths that I do own that I pulled out for y'all to see. Beautiful gun, beautiful gun. And also, I do carry this thing sometimes. Imagine that. Uh, let's see what else we got going on here. I'm going to do some weirdo stuff. Weirdo, weirdo. Here's my weirdo, one of my weirdo pieces. This right here is a Magnum Research Lone Eagle 30-06 single shot hunting pistol with a Burris scope on there. Ah, it's a very rare gun. Not too many of them around. Fortunately, I know somebody, met somebody who actually could build parts for this should any of the parts break, which is a wonderful thing. Shout out to Mr. Wilk. The guy, you know who this guy is. Need I say more? Back to this gun here. This is a single shot 30-06. Came in a 30 out six. It's got a 12 inch barrel. It has, you know, your your muzzle brake on there to, to withstand. And it's a very easy shoot. It's not as bad as people would think, considering it is a 30 out six. Um, it shoots relatively flat. A really nice gun to have if you could find them. They do have them in different uh, calibers as well. 308. Uh, I think I saw one in 556. Five, but once again, you have to find them. They're they're a rare piece because I don't make them anymore. So this is one of my weirdo joints. It's a cool, cool shoot, really good shoot. And maybe I might go hunting with it, with it one day. Maybe. Okay, what else we, ooh, dang, I'm already tearing stuff up. Anyway. This one right here is one of my, you know, I love one of my favorite pieces. I am a, a Johnnet guy, Candid guy. This one I bought when they first came out, when they first were released, SFX, with the, the um, gray tungsten on there. Black and uh, black, I should say charcoal. Um, and when it came with the scopes and stuff like when it came with scopes, when they came with the red light, this is the burst fast fire that I got on there. This is the TP9 SFX, it's clear. I took the mag out, even though this one the mag is loaded because it's one of the guns. Any event, some shit has to happen, I'll use it. Um, this is a really fun gun, like I stated, I bought this uh, when it first came out. I think I might have been, I don't know. One of the first thousand maybe with it when they first came out in 2016, 2017, when they really first were making making their way to the market. Uh, so I was one of the you know earlier buyers. I should say the first, one of the first, one of the earlier buyers of this thing. And this gun's a really a fun shoot. At first, it was a little hiccupy, but after you feed a few rounds through it, like most guns, you got to break them in. And this was one of those guns you got to break in. And now she shoots pretty much anything. So it's a really nice gun to have. I like it. The Stormtrooper one that's out, shout out to True Butter. Has the Flare Magwell and a few other little toys on there, all white. That's a pretty gun. But I, you know, I stick with the fact that I'm an OG, so I get an OG uh, SFX. Oh, and one that you rarely see a lot of people with. There are people out there with them, but not a lot. Right here, Kunin 1911. This one is chambered in 357 Magnum. If you don't believe me, there it is right there, 357 Magnum. In your face. In your face. In your face. In your face. <laughs> in your face. <laughs> right here, make sure the gun is clear. Yes, it's clear. This is one of a collector's items. I shot a relatively a few rounds through it and I bought it used. Funny. You know, when they mean by used, I think the guy shot a magazine through it and didn't want it anymore. I don't know what the hell he was thinking. He's probably kicking himself in the ass now. Cause these bad boys, you're gonna pay a bag for these now. Hell, just this right here. Oh, damn, just dropping stuff all over the place. Just dropping stuff. This right here is 350 bucks in itself. Just a magazine. That's how high in value these bad boys have climbed. Because Coonan, for the second time, has stopped making these things. So this one is definitely second gen. Coonan 1911. 
I would love to have gotten the Commander, but I would, oof, what they go for now, I wouldn't even think about touching. So this one has become a little bit more of a safe queen now, but you know, I've, I've dropped it once, you know, um, guns are meant to be shot, you know, and sometimes with character marks on it, uh, sometimes they go for more in that case. But this is definitely a nice collector's piece. If you want to spend a bag on it, definitely. Because it was a bag when I bought it, so it's a bigger bag now for it. Um, I bought this years ago. Okay, now that's all the pistols I'm going to do. At least handguns, I should say. I'm going to get to more some of the rifles and pistol variants and all that stuff. And where to go, where to go, where to go. I'm going to go with one of my favorites right here. This one right here is my Steve McQueen right here. This is my Henry Mare's Leg, chambered in 45 long Colt. And uh, this one is a home defense one. So I'm not taking anything out. I'm not right. I'm not uh, pulling a lever or anything like that. You just kind of just look at it in awe. Because this guy is one of the ones that I use to protect my house. 45 people are like, man, why would you use a lever gun? That's crazy, man. I actually sleep with this gun. Um, people are like, man, why would you use a lever gun, man? That's crazy, man. You only got only got about five rounds, man. That ain't gonna do nothing. There ain't no practicality. It's 45 long colt, people. 45 long colt. Eh, it's nothing to sneeze at. You're gonna hurt somebody with 45 long. Absolutely. It's not gonna feel good. And it's not like you're gonna have so many sophisticated people bum rushing you. That's not gonna happen. And a lot of those people who try to bum rush you ain't trying to get shot. So if for any way that they see their buddy gets tagged with a 45 long, they might not, they may rethink their life a little bit before they try to pursue. All right, so this is a pretty decent home defense gun. It's, I, I use it bumping. So y'all just have to, he's had me. 45 long Colt, Henry Mare's leg. Ah. Now, gotta have my hookah break. Gotta have my hookah break. Why don't we take a five minute break? Very good, sir. On to the next, on to the next. Ooh, let's go bolt action. CNR, right here, this is a beautiful piece. I saw this in Virginia and had to have it. I walked by it about three or four times. The fourth time, I went ahead and grabbed it. I said, There's no way in the world I can keep walking by this thing. This is a Argentine Mauser, 1891 carbine. Right, this one we use in ceremonies, but this is a really nice gun. 765 Argentine bolt action. This is a really nice shoot right here. I do have a second Argentine Mauser, but this is my carbine. This one is a really nice shoot. I recommend you definitely get one of these in there at bolt action, but definitely a 765 Argentine. You can never go wrong with one of these. A really nice gun to have in your collection, and it's a really great shape for a gun that's as old as it is and uh yeah that's pretty much it with this guy it holds uh, five rounds but you know it is a beautiful gun what's next what's on deck Ooh, let's go with this one right here i'll go ar you know ar 15 rbg my rbg this one is my franken gun i built this but one of the ones i built this one is chambered in 450 Bushmaster. It is definitely empty. We'll go ahead and clear it. Those people ain't too mad. There you go. 450 Bushmaster. AR, red, black, green. Got the skeletonized. Stock skeletonized. Pistol grip. Bought these from a gun show. 450 Bush. This thing definitely does punch you a little bit. You will feel this right here slap into your shoulder when you're shooting 450 Bushmaster. But this is a nice piece. At the camera. No one's around. I'm the only one here. I'm in a safe and controlled environment. Don't worry about it, you safety Nazis. But this one here is a fun shoot. I'm a big boar guy. I love big boar stuff. So that's one of my big boars. Lay you down very gently, somewhat gently. Next, let's see what else I'm going to do. Let's see. Ooh, one of my stampers. One of my stamps. This one right here is my PAP M92. It was started off as a pistol, converted to SBR with that Form 1. It's got the buttstock on there, no brace. I have a second buttstock. And it's, it's not really flush against the receiver. Um, I do want to get that checked out, get that, make sure it's good to go. But I've shot a lot of rounds through it and I had no problems, so it's good. But I might make this a little more tactical. I love that freaking, love that muzzle break on there, man. Woo, man, talk about a fireball. 
I love it. But yeah, this is my SBR, M92 SBR. Used to be a pistol, now it ain't. Form one, baby, form one. This is 100% legal. Form one to your ATF. You wait about uh, six to 12 months, and after you get that approval, then you can go ahead and do what you need to do to make this bad boy even cooler than it was when you first bought it. To all you who think you know about how the ATF works that actually don't. But that's enough on that one. I'm not gonna get too crazy on that, but that's just one of my stamps. Now to do my second stamp. Oh, I'll do another stamp, why not? This one right here is my Vepra 12 SBS. Yes, no mag and clear, all right? This is my SBS, which stands for Short Barrel Shotgun. This bad boy is a lot of fun to shoot. It started off as a regular Vepra 12, but I form one it, waited my time, got approved, and they chopped about 10 inches off this barrel, and it is a hoot to shoot. There's a few things I'm gonna do to, to kind of modify it. Um, just a few things I want to do. I want to put an adjustable a adjustable gas block on there and uh, make it even cooler. But right now I like it. It's a lot of fun to shoot. It's a thumper. And you can never go wrong with thumpers at all. So this is my Vepra 12 SPS. Form 1, of course. You got to do those Form 1s if you want to have the legal cool stuff. got to stay legal, y'all. Next, okay, let's get down to some pistolas, pistolas. Well, I say pistol variant ARs, pistol variant ARs. We will do that, not that one, not that one. You didn't see nothing. This one right here, ooh, this one used to have, used to be on a 300 blackout. I had a 300 blackout upper and I got rid of that thing. I got tired of 300 blackout. It was, to me, it's overrated. To me, it is more height than anything else but that's okay for those who enjoy 300 blackout it's fun to shoot suppressed but uh, yeah i'm not really a huge fan of 300 blackout so i went ahead and gave my donated my 300 blackout uppers and i got another 76239 pistol variant upper to put on this lower because this lower is feeling very lonely so i needed to put an upper on it it is clear as you can see make sure y'all know it's clear it's got the romeo the sick romeo on there so you know, that I won in a raffle. But uh, this is a cute little gun. There's a few, few more things I want to do. I put some the here, put some grips here so I can kind of take away from the Pictini rail, you know, scrape me up. I'm gonna get some more and make it look a little cleaner. But right now, this is a little basic. I want to change out this pistol grip. I got a ton of these basic uh, M16 pistol grips. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put some a little cooler on there just to make it look cooler. Got to, you know, SB Tactical Stabilizer on there. So this is a really neat little joint, eight inch barrel, 762 by 39 AR. It's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. All right, let's see what else we got cracking here. Let's do another uh, Pistola, Pistola. Ooh, man, I'm telling you, these bad boys are all over the place. Oh, right here. This one you'll probably see in some of my videos when I'm going live and stuff like that. Um, this one right here is a palmetto upper with a uh, built upper, a built lower receiver I put together, Anderson lower. These Andersons back in the day were like 50 bucks and some are even as low as 20 bucks, man. It was crazy back in those times. Shout out to the plague for making it more expensive for people to have fun with these guns. But anyway, this right here, the other SB Tactical Brace, one of the first ones that came out with a really fat, you know, really fat cheap weld because ATF lets you do things, um, is clear. There you go. This one right here is 5.56. Five, I don't have many 5.56 five, five, um, ARs anymore, just two pistols. This is one of them. This one here has a spike tactical. Uh, this, is the spikes. this might be, no, this is actually like the spikes. Uh, pistol grip. I can't think so. I can't know what it is. But it's definitely not an M16. It's not a basic M16 uh, pistol grip. This one's a, a fun shoot, believe it or not. And the funny thing is this red dot, check it out. Bushnell, Bushnell red dot. People are like, man, Bushnell ain't that great. Actually, these Bushnell red dots are really good. I got put onto these back in 2016. Then this is around the time I actually built this one, or put this one together, I should say. Um, and they told me about the Bushnell. I was looking at the aim point, aim point's like 400 bucks. That's a little bit out of my, out of my, out of my reach um, for a, red dot especially if this gun at the time i put it together cost me 300 bucks i'm not going to uh put a 400 dollars scope on a 300 dollars gun that's just stupid in my opinion my opinion just gonna hoop his opinion that bush now definitely is really accurate a really 
good, a really good red dot. I do have the rise for it, the base rise, but I don't really need it because I really hold myself really low. My cheek is really in there. And sometimes if I do shoot a pistol, I can do that. But most of the time, I'm you know, cheek low. It. So it's not bad. I do have the rise in the event on this particular one, but you know, it works for me. I, I you know, I, I punch paper and I, I slap steel, so that's all that matters to me. Now, nether pistol, whoo hoo. Everybody knows about them 50 Bay Wolves, the 12 by sevens, right? This right here is, I mean, the 12 sevens by, what is it, 12 seven by 42, 50 Bay Wolf. Yes, this right here is my build from scratch. Everything, you know, put together from the rooter to the tutor. Tactical. This right here is my 50 Beowulf pistol. This one is eight inch barrel here. For those who don't believe me, if it's 50 Beowulf, it says 50 Beowulf right there. This is my pistol. It said eight inch barrel. It's it's a rocker. It took me a little. It had some cycling issues in the beginning, but I changed out the uh, buffer, and that definitely helped. That definitely helped. That 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 cured that problem really quickly. This is the guy right here. One of my favorite ones to shoot. And you know, about that 50 Beowulf, 50 Beowulf is so nice. Ooh, I had to do it twice. Look at that. This is the 50 Beowulf rifle. This one right here has an Alexander Arms upper, right? But everything else is built. I got the Hera foregrip, the Hera stock on there. Uh, I found this cheap ass red dot. And it's actually not a bad red dot, believe it or not. A little loose. I got to tighten it up, but you know, it's in the safe in there i can stoop it but this is my 50 beowulf you know, go ahead here uh fist, uh, excuse me, pistol right rifle right here like i said alexander arms actually is coin 50 beowulf everything else is technically 12 7 by 42 but uh who who's counting right so there's that now to get to some other guns let's see what else i got here that's sexy we'll do another my last ar that i'm going to show in this video this guy out the way Hey, lay you down gently. This one right here. A lot of people don't, a lot of people ain't got this one. He finally seen to me in this one. This is a 50 caliber. I did a video on it. This is a uh, AR-10. This guy right here, BHA, 500 Auto Max. Basically, it's an AR-10 that shoots 500 Smith & Wesson. It is clear, got the, the, you know, the Leopold scope on there. And, you know, and of course, my bipod. I want to look tactical. But this gun is a lot of fun to shoot, a lot of thump. It's a really good time with this gun. I love it. You'll love it too. Um, if you can find them now, they got pistol variants too. Um, but you're, you're going to pay a little something for it, man. You know, if you want to pay some bread, get it. Mine is number 121. So I'm the 121st person to own one of these puppies. So that, I kind of pride myself in that being under 500. Um, being less than that, under 150. You know, so like I said, 121st person to own this gun. I bought this gun a few years ago uh, when they first came out, and I accidentally stumbled across it. That's the crazy joint. I was looking at the BHA. Hold on, who could break? Ooh, yeah, I love that feature. I stumbled across this gun because I was looking at the BH. I mean, the Big Horn, the Type 80, the Model 89. 500 Smith & Wesson lever action, and they just so happened to show this puppy that, hey, we're coming out with these guns. Go ahead and put you a deposit down and you can get you one. And I said, ooh, I'm not a huge AR fan, but I am a big boar fan. You mean to tell me you got an AR that shoots 500 Smith & Wesson? Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And they had military discount. Oh, even better. So I went ahead and caught this puppy. Now, the people ask the question, well, what is the difference between the 500 Automax and the 50 Beowulf? Well, let me go ahead and explain that to you. It's like the difference between shooting 500 Magnum and 50 Action Express. They're both 50s, but they just don't feel the same. Just letting you know. And the person who owns them both, take my word for it. Now, for that, I'm going to put that one down. This one, this one. Now to get some of the cooler, more CNRs. One of my favorite, favorite battle rifles in history. Gotta have one of these, SKS. 
this right here. Woo! You go ahead, do that. It is clear. So this right here is a Type 56 Norinco. This is the Chinese SKS. This thing is so much fun to shoot, and it's relatively sought after. Even though there's plenty of them out there you probably get, but this is one of the ones I would definitely recommend you have in your collection outside the Tula Russian version. Definitely get you an SKS, this one is particular. Um, I love this gun. It's a really fun shoot, and I said it's one of my favorite battle rifles. Now, I'm gonna let you know, this trigger ain't that great. Ew, ugh, this trigger's ugly as hell. But this gun is so robust, it's so durable. It takes a whooping, man. I love this gun. Um, so I definitely am a hardcore SKS person. I definitely recommend it. There's a few more I still want to get. But you know I like SKSs. I so nice. I had to do it twice. Two SKSs. This one here is the Yugo one. This is the one that had the grenade launcher on there. This thing is a lot of fun to shoot. Of course, you have your sight. I'm not even gonna play with that right now. But this one, yes, we'll go ahead and it's clear. This is definitely a Yugo SKS. So you got the bayonet on there. It's a really nice gun. I really enjoy shooting these SKS. Like I said, the trigger isn't that great, but SKSs are some of the best robust battle rifles you could have in your collection. And I always say this is my go-to. If anything were to really go down, I use the SKS. Man, this thing is so robust. Man. I love it. So that's the SKS. But wait a minute. You know, SKS is like I said, so nice. I did it twice. So nice. I had to do it thrice. <laughs> what a bunch of fucking bullshit. Three SKSs, man. Ooh, another Hugo SKS. It didn't have the, the great launcher sight on this one. I bought this. What's my earlier ones I bought? I think I paid like 200 bucks for it. And, you know, you can't go wrong with this bad boy here. You can never go wrong with an SKS. Man, you got to do it, man. It's got the 40 round mag on there. <laughs> Come on, man. This is. You can't go wrong with this. You just can't. For those, you know, who like, man, you only got 10 rounds. This one's got 40. So there you go. SKS all day, every day, twice on Sunday. SKS, SKS, SKS. If you don't have one in your collection, I am so sorry for you. I can't help you. On to the next. This one right here is a cool gun. I scoop scoop for a low price. This is a Mauser M98. 8 millimeter. This one's a sporter gun. A great, as you can see, it's used. The person who bought it obviously used it for hunting. This is a really nice piece. A really great shoot. 8 millimeter. Come on, you can't go wrong with 8 millimeter, man. This thing is a rocker. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful gun. Really beautiful gun. I love bolt actions. You're not going to have too many issues with bolt action unless you have a really hot load, a hot round. And there's nothing that's gonna push it back because the bolt's locked in. If you have a hot round, whoo, yeah. Like, it could be ugly, but for the most part, you know, if you take care of it, you'll be fine. But yeah, this, this M98 is, is, is beautiful. This smells a really good gun, sporterized. It's over here. And I, I caught it on a real cheap back in the day. So, of course, you gotta get it. Now, let's see how many more guns I got. Well, let's do this. Let you slide down. Right here, I call this the Ida. This is the Ida B. Wells Barnett. This right here is the Winchester 94. There we go. See, I'm all old, trying to be all cool and, and screw that up. 3030, M9, you know, Model 94, Winchester, 3030. Recommend that every black home have one of these. Of course, just for symbolic issues, but it's a really good shoot. 3030, Winchester, you know, good hunting gun. People use it, great home protection considering if you want to use 3030 uh, 30 for home protection but it, you know anything works man anything works but yeah this is a really good gun to have in your collection should have it lever action second lever i see i got about uh, a couple more guns i'm gonna do and then that's that's about it but before i do that go ahead and smash that like button subscribe all that good stuff if you know please hit the like button for your boy I'm trying to do this stuff. It's a lot of work and you know, show love to the gun tubers out there who show part of their lives and educate you at the same time. Man, oh, I need some more smoke. We're gonna take a smoke break, y'all. Smoke that. Smoke if you got them. Well, all right. Another bolt action. Woo! 
This one right here is another one I recommend you add to your collection. This one right here is a Mosin Nagant M44. You got to have one of these bad boys in your joint, man. Bolt action, 7.62x54R. Look that round up. That round right there is a monster. Definitely has taken a lot of necks back in the World War II era. And of course, when you run out of ammo, you got this monster pig stick up right there. Look at the size of that bayonet. Of course, the civilian ones, they blocked off, but the OG ones had that nice little, nice little, uh, whatchamacallit on there, that nice little point. Even though these right here would not feel too good, but of course they had to block it off as civilians, but the original ones were sharp, pointy, and when you jab somebody with that, man, you leaving a very nasty mark, that one that may not necessarily be able to be closed up. A lot of the modern bayonets are more for slicing, these original ones for impaling, and they did a significant job at that, but definitely a robust, very robust gun right here. Uh, 7.62.54R, most in the gun. This is the M44, the smaller version. They have the 9130s as well that I recommend you get. But definitely get you a Type 44, man. This is definitely an uh, M44, excuse me, it's a Type 44. M44. You definitely want one of these. I actually have two. I have the Type 53, the Chinese version as well. But definitely get you one of these in your collection. Two more guns and then that's it. Gunner Luke is done showing the guns he's going to show. This one right here, ooh hoo hoo. I love this little joint right here, man. My little plinker. What the hell you think you're doing with that little shit? Ruger Wrangler, this chamber in 22 long. This thing right here is beautiful. You feed it right there for real, look at that. You feed it. Feed the cylinder. 22 long rifle, and nice little, you know, nice little plinker. Nice little uh, small games, you know, snake gun, whatever. 22 long. People sleep on 22 long. I don't know why people sleep on 22 long Colt. Like, it, I mean, 22 long Colt. 22 long rifle. Like, it ain't gonna do anything to you. Like, oh, you can just skip right through 22. Let me tell you something. 22 is probably one of the worst rounds you can get shot with because it may not go through you. But it's gonna do a lot of bouncing around and tearing up all kinds of stuff on the inside of you that you really don't wanna be tore up. And don't be like 22 Magnum or 22 Hornet, which is just some nasty rounds themselves. But 22 long is definitely nothing to sleep on. It's good. The 22 long rifle has actually been used in certain wars. So for those who like guns that have been used in combat, 22 longs have been used in combat. Not necessarily the Ruger Wrangler, but 22 longs have been used in combat, right? They are quiet and they're very light. So you can carry a whole bunch of those rounds with you and not really weigh yourself down. So it's definitely a nice little gun. And if you need to shoot you some small games, some squirrel, rabbit, you know, snakes, you know, you out there and you gotta eat. It's gonna take care of the job. So, and the final gun, the final gun of this video, thank God. This one right here, I have shown. You have seen it be shot. You have seen me show it. This one right here, 470 Nitro Express Encore. Yes, indeed, this guy right here is a lot of fun. You've seen it be shot. This is a lot of fun. This one's an eight inch barrel. Find a way when I put an eight inch barrel. Shoot a 470. And you know, people like, man, you shoot a 470 nitro, man. Every short barrel like that, man, you're gonna have a whole lot of powder. No, I'm gonna let you know, the powder burns pretty quickly. So, you really don't. It ain't gonna be that much energy when you shoot the 470 nitro express out of a short barrel. Okay, buddy. Have you ever shot a 470 nitro out of a short barrel? I would probably guess you haven't. So you really can't make that 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 determining factor. That's what real hating is all about, man. Shout out to SSK Injuries, uh, Injuries Industries for making this beautiful thing. I got two of these 470 Nitros Express. I have a couple of uh, other Nitro Express ones as well for um, 40 Encore, but this is a really beautiful frame to have. People go, man, these ancient guns, these old guns. Nah, it's actually not that old. It's a single shot, that's all it is. It's just got a nice little uh, look to it. Beautiful aesthetics. I love the aesthetics, right? Everything don't have to always be about tactical stuff, right? So sometimes you want to have some of the nicer, cooler things that look neat and you got fun with it. And there is a level of practicality, whether you want to believe it or not. Practicality, it might be practically goddamn cool to shoot. Shit, I like shooting it. People who shot this gun love shooting it. So evidently, I'm doing something goddamn right with this motherfucker. That's just my opinion. But this is a really fun gun to shoot. But once again, I'll show you that it is not loaded, right? 
this is a really fun gun to shoot. Um, like I said, it brought smiles to the people who actually shot this gun. It brought smiles to their faces. And um, I hope to bring more smiles to other people's faces when they get behind this thing. And it does beat your hands up, of course. It's a wrist breaker. I bought it for that reason. I bought a gun that I know I could shoot and I will enjoy shooting. And anybody else who shoots it will enjoy it as well. That's how you do this game, people. It ain't always gotta be about tactical shit. It's about fun sometimes, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta have a little fun in this game. And that's what I do. I enjoy what I do. I enjoy teaching people about this stuff. I enjoy learning about this stuff because that's who I am. Gun and a hookah, baby. Gun and a hookah. I talked enough about guns. Now I'm gonna get on this hookah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait one second. I do have one last gun I want to show in my collection. And this gun has probably got to be the coolest gun that I own at this particular moment. This gun right here, ooh, ooh, look at that. Man, what you know about this right here, boy? You don't know nothing about this. This is my, you would call it a Pap, you wanna call it a Draco, I don't give a damn, but this gun actually pours me a drink. It is actually vodka, people, vodka. This is actually some drink right here, some liquor. I love this gun because it can pour me a drink. You dig what I'm saying? I can get drunk shooting this gun. Well, not shooting this gun, but pouring a drink out of this gun. This is the coolest joint. Ukrainian vodka. You can't go wrong with Ukrainian vodka. It probably tastes like shit. But I'm going to drink a lot of it because of the coolest of the bottle. You dig? But that is all I really have for y'all. I am so glad that y'all hung out with me as long as you did. Man. This is a beautiful time. that I'm having in 2022. I want to wish y'all happy New Year's. New Year, excuse me, New Year, New Year, all right? Wish you happy New Year, welcome to 2022. New beginnings, new calendar, still the chaos that's out there, but hey, we gonna walk through it and beat those odds. That's what life is about. This is your boy Gun Hookah one more time with the hookah. And I bid you a further ado. Is that how you say it? No, I mean, scratch that, scratch that. Peace, deuces, love y'all. We out of here.